I thought I'd give you a tour around the Sheffield Grey to Green area today. I think this project was originally funded by the EU, that's why Sheffield City Council was so EU orientated because they were getting certain grants. I doubt they're going to get any grants from the EU now. Now it is a beautiful day in Sheffield so we are going to get the best view possible of the Grey to Green. My big issue with this area, and just look at it today, spot the person. I come into Sheffield for the hustle and bustle of the city, not to be in the middle of a garden. Now Sheffield did have green areas before, the Peace Gardens were a lot greener than they are now. They were a lot nicer. Peace Gardens is a bit of a concrete jungle now. We had the good, Goodwin Fountains on top of Fargate. Just gives you an idea of it. Now it's said to reduce the flooding in the city. Well, I can't ever really remember any flooding around here. But all this is doing is it's reducing the chance of getting your car into Sheffield. Seems to be a class of people now in Sheffield. More like globalists. They're not real Sheffielders. They've probably come here from the unis. Middle class type people. But the city of Sheffield belongs to the Sheffield people what I call the DDARs. I mean, my family history goes back to about the 1700s in Sheffield. I'm a real Sheffield, uh, I just don't talk like one. So you've got these posts up here. But have you seen many people so far? Up here we're going towards the Victoria Keys. Now where Victoria Keys was was Malchavis car park. Large car park, very cheap. Used to be able to walk in from here quite easily. Bottom of the parkway. Now I think the river sheaf's probably coming underneath me at this point and they're talking about bringing the river sheaf back out of its culvert. Now there's a river cafe here. I think this was the old toilet block but I've never seen it being used. There's nobody in it at the moment. Probably it shut down with lockdown. So we're now on Blanc Street and I'm going to turn around in a moment but I'm going to show you the most important river in Sheffield. This is the River Don here and the most important river is the River Sheff Sheaf and Sheffield comes from Sheaf Field so it's the River Sheaf and Field so that's where Sheffield comes from and that river sheaf goes under that concrete culvert I think towards the uh, railway station Across, so if you imagine that's the river sheaf there river down there and you can see some wooden boards and beyond there was Sheffield Castle the biggest castle in the north of England and it was sacked during the uh, Civil War because it was a monarchy stronghold. It's a real shame. Now, I've written to the leader of Sheffield City Council to tell him how, how appalled I am with what they've done to Sheffield. I've asked them how they sleep at night. 
And what I've said is there's one last chance for Sheffield and that is to build the castle back just there on the side to the old castle market. Well, that's the one last chance for Sheffield, I think. If they build the castle back there, the tourism it'll bring to Sheffield will be absolutely fantastic. They also the historical side of things with the Mary Queen of Scots, can, that can all be incorporated. But I know they've rebuilt a medieval castle in France and I think they could actually rebuild Sheffield Castle. Massive project, but it would create some absolute fantastic interest in Sheffield and bring Sheffield back to life. So I have directly asked the leader of Sheffield City Council to actually do something right this time. Now I might be shouting a bit because it's a bit windy. We're back on the greater green area and you can see the board in Sheffield City, sorry, Sheffield uh, Castle was somewhere along there. And that way you can see the raised concrete along there as well. So wouldn't it be fantastic to rebuild Sheffield Castle in its entirety? They've got a good idea what it looked like. It'd be a brilliant project for teaching people new skills, incorporating big history museum into it but this was once a busy road and it also had trams on it as well bringing people into Sheffield or around the city and when they actually remove the road round here you could actually see the uh, tram lines that had been tarmacked over worst thing Sheffield ever did is removing the tram because the Modern super tram is a joke. It hardly carries any of the traffic into the city. It's uh, just for certain people. What about the rest of the people? I think they should have incorporated more of the tram, tram system onto railway lines. Like for example, where I live, S25 in Sheffield. There's 25,000 people live there. It's a railway line, it's the old colliery line and that could actually be upgraded slightly at uh, Lindrick Dale and at that point it would then be able to easily carry hybrid super trams into Sheffield carrying 25,000 people. It would be fantastic for Sheffield because it would bring more customers in but it would also be fantastic for people who work out at Anston and Dinnington to get into Sheffield and also the reverse thing there's some beautiful countryside around where I live stop gra greening over our cities and let's create them back into what they should be shopping areas entertainment areas so we're on Castlegate at the moment And here we have Ladies Bridge. This is the main bridge into Sheffield back in the medieval times. Takes you down to the wicker down there. It's so deserted. If you look at the old videos of Sheffield, this was absolutely caking with buses coming up here, bringing people into the city. See the uh, original town hall that became the court building up there, and the awful modern town building from the 1970s, the extension. That was once a pub. But this area that takes you up to the hay market was once streaming with people. As well as having the Sheaf Castle Market, it also had lots of good shops, Woolworths, British Home Stores. Totally killed off by Sheffield City Council. That's looking back down Castlegate. 
to the grey green area and then you've got Wayne Gate up there. So we're going to carry on. This is once a brewery, just here. Exchange Brewery, you used to be able to smell this as you came into Sheffield. So we're now coming up to the new court building where the Greater Green Area carries along. But one of the things I thought is, where's the maintenance for this? Because Sheffield City Council have real airbrain ideas and then they trash it over after a while and they get bored with it. For example, the hole in the road were a brilliant thing. I think it was built in about 1968 and it only lasted to 1994. But rather than trashing it after they found, didn't see it as being useful anymore, it could have been actually extended down to the moor, could have been cleaned up, could have been secured off at night and it could have been the access for all the shops to create some sort of indoor shopping centre but Sheffield City Council have air brain ideas and then they just get rid of them just like that I mean it costs money so we've got Erwin Mitchells here and Erwin Mitchells is a new thing I mean there weren't these massive solicitors in Sheffield but they're springing up around the new court buildings I mean, already looking at it, it's looking a bit shabby. The grey to green, like I said, where's the maintenance? And I just think the flooding thing is just an excuse to justify their decision to do the grey to green area. I keep saying, just notice how few people are around here, how are we all benefiting from this greater green area? Looking back down to the exchange brewery. Just look at the number of police fans out the back of there. It's coming to the bottom of Snig Hill around here. going to show you something anywhere they can put a car parking machine they'll stick a park, car parking machine we used to be able to park on roads for free in Sheffield but most of the time you could use a bus because it was a cheap bus service so because everybody were using the bus there weren't as many cars it's all short-sighted, but what, what the heck is going off over here? Massive new development. Is this going to be more high-rise flats? Even behind it, you've already got loads of flats. I mean, they keep building more and more flats in Sheffield. I don't know if that's flats or office use, but they're just building more and more flats, who are they going to house in them? Is that the idea, to bring all these people in from Africa through the back door and then use them as cheap labour like they were using the EU workers as cheap labour? They, they don't care about the immigrants or the refugees, it's just cheap labour to them. It's part of the British Empire, it's the slavery thing all over again. You don't need this cheap labour because you can automate things and we haven't automated things in the right way. Yeah, we've got all these new computers, but they've not been used for our benefit. They've been used to actually control us. So they need the cheap labour to work in the warehouses, picking food and various other things. And I've seen a, a machine picking peas 
all on its own, just completely clears the field, appease and shells them. So I think you're going to be seeing more and more economic migrants coming into Sheffield. Not refugees, that's just a disguise for their agenda. But I'm not going to do the new building down there today. I just thought I'd just show it here as I was coming through. It shows you the grey to green phase one. Phase two and phase three. Like I say, I just think uh, the flooding control is just uh, an excuse for doing it, not the real reason. to green looked okay at the other end but it looks pretty dead off at this side whoever's doing it and thought about you need colour all the way through summer I'd rather see Sheffield full of people, cars and shops and the hustle and bustle of a city. I don't particularly want to see Greater Green but I just want to show you the agenda. I want to see my country lanes looking like this with British country flowers. I'm not interested in seeing it in the city centre. A few flower beds would be nice like we used to have. I think the Peace Gardens used to be look a lot nicer back in the 70s, a lot greener. Now you go in the Peace Gardens, it's full of concrete and it's full of shouting and screaming and music. It's supposed to be the Peace Gardens, site of uh, St Paul's Church that they removed at the end of the Second World War. There was nothing wrong with St Paul's, it could have been made into a a new building or repurposed museum for Sheffield or whatever but no they've just knocked it down probably plundering the assets from it as Dora Vernon would say they want to plunder so we come in to the edge of the greater green. This is the West Bar area. That was the original fire station and police station at West Bar. Hamptons was the 1960s police station. And then, I can't believe this, just look up at this lot. I used to work at Griffin House on the left hand side. To take you up. That front block is the front of Griffin House and that was seven stories on the left and on this side there was nothing, just old car parks. And just look at the skyscrapers on that side, that's Tenter Street. Just imagine that was old industrial land or car parking land and now it's high rise skyscrapers and all behind it. That's all skyscrapers, and if you imagine there, all this area here, behind here is all high rise flats going right the way up to the university. Got an old pub left, but that's not a pub anymore. So we'll have a walk back up to Sniggill because they're taking the grey to green further into Sheffield. So at West Bar, but what I'm going to just do is show you, I don't know what this development is. 
of a massive new development. Anywhere they can build on industrial land, they build on it. That road takes you up into the uh, city, up into Paradise Square. But anybody who hasn't been to Sheffield for some years will just not recognise it. Sign in the middle. I think we all know bees are good and I love bees. As you can see when you come in from the parkway, it's quite colourful and looks okay. But my worst concern was this, that at this end there's no flowers. I just don't think they've thought the maintenance out. I know what's going to happen next, there's going to be litter everywhere in it. But they have extended it and I'm moving back to where they've extended it. Sheffield's got two universities, that's I think 30,000 of them both. And they're sucking a lot of graduate type people in, middle class earners. And uh, they have a different view on things to what I've got but they're not real Sheffielders like I said I go back to 1700s and this isn't Sheffield anymore one last chance is uh, rebuilding the castle for tourism it's coming back to Snig Hill now Now, Sling Hill joins up with Angel Street, and Angel Street was absolutely blitzed in the Second World War. Now, it's had some fantastic departmental stores that were rebuilt in the 60s. But now they're all shut and empty. The co-op's listed. It's got a beautiful spiral staircase in. So, we're on Snig Hill here, that's the modern police station from probably the 70s. Now this is a bit that survived the war, I think this part of Snig Hill got hit. Hit. Back down to the uh, new court buildings. Just here, there's the Black Swan, this got hit in the Second World War, this is a modern sort of 60s building. I don't know what imposters are. So there's you, you've got Sniggill Police Station. Was the headquarters of South Yorkshire Police. Now the headquarters are out at Carbrook in the East End of Sheffield. And that's another story that. Hiding behind steel barriers down there. They don't really want to deal with the public by the looks of it. When I handed in a three and a half thousand signature petition for reopening and doing some police station, I had a right job getting in there. They didn't want me coming in with three and a half thousand signatures. So there's the old castle out co-op. 
like I said, it's listed, it's got a beautiful spiral staircase in the middle. I think it's getting a bit of life coming back to it. So there's a little bit of grey to green up here, bringing us into where the original hole in the road was. Now, yeah, it does look nice when there's a bit of colour in it at the moment. But down near the modern court building, it don't look nice at all to me. Up here, where you can see Argus, that was Cocaine's. That was the original Sheffield departmental store that got bombed in the Second World War, rebuilt. Did become Schofield's lease for a while. When I go up to the top, I'll show you a view back down Angel Street. But we are approaching the hole in the road. Like I said at the time, it wanted cleaning up. I think it wanted modernising and securing at night. But after less than 30 years, Sheffield City Council just trashed it. Now, just here, it says King Street. We're going to have King's Tower. Now, I think King's Tower is only going to be this bit here. It's going to be 43 storeys high. I don't think it's going to be all that lot down there. But there's been no further update on them starting with a building. The only positive thing is it'll give us a higher building than Lees, but I don't know. It's going to look a little bit like a sore thumb in Sheffield. So I'll show you back down. That's back down Angel Street towards Snagill. So that's a quick tour around the Greater Green, Greater Green area in Sheffield. Please tell me what you think about it. Am I being unfair with Sheffield City Council or, or am I being fair? Like I said, I want to see more people, I want to see more shops, I want to see more entertainment and I want to see more hustle and bustle in the city because it belongs to, to 700,000 people who are living in Sheffield. Not the uh, globalists who have camped out in our city centre. So that's it, over and out from me.